All right, we are live on the show with Sam Altieri today. Welcome, Sam. Hello, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh my God, I've just been following you for a little while, but I'm so in love with your content. And of course, we're going to dive into what you're up to. But we are going to discuss today van life and having a successful business while we are traveling, having the nomadic lifestyle, all with an authentic brand and using intuition and feminine flow. That's just a few of the themes, but I just can't wait to ask Sam all about her lifestyle and any tips she might have for us. So Sam, why don't you introduce yourself with your own words? Sure. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, you touched upon it briefly, right? Like I am totally a nomad. I think I have that, that Sagittarius energy is definitely real in me. I, I love adventuring and meeting people and I think I've always had a desire to be a nomad ever since I read Tim Ferriss's book uh four hour work week and I realized that you could like travel and work and I think the second I read that book when I was in my nine to five I my in my previous life I was an architect (laughs) and (laughs) um yeah I remember like going on a trip and flying on the plane and reading this book and being like oh my god I need to do this like there was like no other option for me I just like that was like that unlocked myself that I was like wait I can do that like hell yeah I already did a lot of traveling in college and after college um, both in groups and solo and I just knew that's really kind of the life I wanted to live and so yeah fast forward to today right um Mm. in let's see in 2011 my fiance and I decided or 2022 2021 what am I saying 2011 2021 my fiance and I decided that we were going to sell basically everything we owned and buy a sprinter van (gasps) and yeah you know have somebody build it out for us with like a custom design because we were going to live in it we wanted this thing to be awesome and so we did that and we moved into it and January of 2022 um so we've been traveling a little bit longer than a year we've taken some breaks of course but um and we've been traveling on the road and while I'm running my coaching business and meeting people and um all of that so it's been it's been a ride it's obviously there's ups and downs but uh we are so glad that we're doing it and honestly I've like really fallen in love with the lifestyle of of traveling full-time so anybody listening to this you have to go and follow Sam on Instagram. I'm going to link everything uh, on the description below, but she just shares so much of her van life on the Instagram stories and a bit on the feed as well. And I think you have a YouTube channel that I'm also going to link. It's just so awesome. nice Thank you. to, to you know, follow along. And, and you're so, as we said, authentic. Huh? You just share how you're dancing. And I saw you, oh, I made thousands of dollars by dancing yesterday. <laughs> That's so cool. Like, how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Like, so, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur now full time since January of 2019. Um, I, I went to undergrad and grad school for architecture. I love architecture. I still do, but I knew that once I started working in my nine to five, I knew that it wasn't for me. And I just, you know, it's like you get a taste of what freedom feels like when you travel, right? Like when you go on a vacation, you know, like, oh, this is just so nice. And I was like, I don't want my life to feel like something I have to escape from, you know, Mm -hmm. or like something I need to like, I have to live for the weekend or live for these trips. And I was like, I'm just gonna find a way to do my own thing. I didn't even know what that meant. And honestly, I did not set out to be an entrepreneur. I know that a lot of people do. They're like, I want to build my own business and I want the freedom. But honestly, that wasn't my journey. It was very much like, I'm going to leave my nine to five and piece together an income with freelance design and freelance Mm -hmm. photography and figure it out and just listen to my intuition and trust like one step at a time. Um, And honestly, that led me down the path of finding personal training and falling in love with fitness and then falling in love with nutrition after I learned like whoa food and movement affect me so much Mm -hmm. and affect my mental state so much and how I feel about myself and what I tell myself 
And then I started coaching because people just saw it in me. And that was really the beginning of like my journey that's led me to now, which I mostly am doing business coaching and mentoring women to right. really step into their power and their potential and their prosperity and all of that. Um, and yeah, so here we are today. <laughs> that's huge. Well, when did you start with your business? What you say then after you quit I your would say. Five? Yeah, like my first coaching client, her name was Erin. I still like love that girl to death. <laughs> It's nice she, you know her name still. Yeah, I mean, she honestly, I t I've told her this a few times, but if it wasn't for her, I don't think I would be a coach because in a way she she asked me a question, which was so simple that in the moment, like we were in the gym, I'll just share the story. We were in the gym, we were walking towards like the locker room And mm -hmm. her and I had taken a few fitness classes together. And you know, when you like go to the gym or like a yoga studio and you see the same people day in and day out, you know, and you just start to recognize their faces. Well, we had gotten to the place where we were like friendly, you know, and um, she asked me a question. She was like, hey, I want to know like more about like protein powders and like which one to get. And like, there's so many and... <laughs> And I literally just had the idea as she was asking me to be like, offer her support. Like, why not? Right. And so I literally just pulled it out of my ass and I was like, <laughs> totally like, I'm so super happy to help you. Um, and if, you know, if you want more like long term help, please let me know. I'd be happy to like talk about like what it could look like or whatever. And she said yes. And mm -hmm. she became my first paying client, a hundred dollars a month. I was helping her with fitness. I was writing her like training wow. plans. And honestly, if it wasn't for that, like, you know, intersection of walking towards the locker room and me just trusting myself that I could figure it out and do it after she yeah. starts paying me. Right. Like that's really when it started. And that was in, I think that was about 2016. I was still in my nine to five, wow. but I was like, I had such a passion for fitness and health. I was, that's all I was researching on my lunch break when I wasn't supposed to have a lunch break, like <laughs> when I should have been doing my work, but I was bored and really just wanted to learn more about nutrition. And so she was the first one. And then people started learning that I was taking on clients and it just kind of snowballed oh, from there. Oh, that's amazing. And that's how you started your Instagram journey, isn't it? From that yeah. Point on. Yeah. It was honestly me. I wasn't sharing any content like that was like informational or like mm -hmm. sharing my own journey. I was just sharing my own journey, right? Like mm -hmm. I had gained a lot of weight. I had a pretty, I would say like, it wasn't even an unhealthy problem with food. It was just more like, I didn't know how to feel my feelings. Mm -hmm. And so food was like how I processed anything, right? Like I couldn't, I, I had so much repressed emotion. So I would just numb that down and I didn't know I was doing that at the time of course but mm -hmm. you know I think at a certain point every woman is like I don't want to feel like this anymore I don't want to look like this anymore like I know I've been like abusing my body in some way and mm -hmm. so I was sharing just my own journey um, on my Instagram which was very vulnerable to share photos of you in a you know bra and underwear or wow. bra and shorts just sharing like well this is how much I weigh and this is what I look like and this is my journey and that was kind of what held me accountable to actually making the changes in the first place because I didn't like I put myself out there and then I had to keep sharing because I felt like oh <laughs> fuck like if I don't change people are gonna say you know so it was really that external accountability and just sharing the journey on Instagram that really did hold me to it wow What I love about you is that you keep rebranding yourself, right? From obviously you're not in the fitness industry any longer, but now you are doing the business coaching. You're also tapping into intuition and like the feminine flow of things. And mm -hmm. I saw a little story where you were just sharing that you're changing your direction a little bit and like almost feeling guilty to leave people behind in a way. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. I so relate to that because I'm multi-passionate too and I have different things going on and I write books and poetry and then like a self-help book. And then I always feel like I'm not putting justice to the people who are following me just for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I think that's been like my journey generally. I mean, I, <laughs> it's funny. I, I always tell my clients and this is something I have to remind myself is like, The thing that you're, the thing that you have the hardest time with, or the thing that maybe you feel the most shame around, or the mm -hmm. thing that you feel like, oh, why can't I, whatever that rest of that sentence is, 
is often your superpower, right? And I think for me, I've always had that internal dialogue of like, why can't I just pick one thing (laughs) and do it? And be known for that one thing. Exactly. It would be so much easier, right? Yeah. And like everyone would just know me for blank, blank, blank. And, you know, of course, there's people that that's their truth, but I have to, I can't not follow what is alive and exciting or mm-hmm. else, like, I, I just can't fake that I'm behind something when I'm not, right? Mm-hmm. And um, that can be a blessing and a curse. But what I have found is that a lot of people, kind of come into my world or like they're like oh my god like I can change I'm allowed to change I'm allowed to pivot I'm like dude I am the master at pivoting I can't pick one thing because (laughs) I get bored and I think that's actually really the the coolest part about landing I feel like I really have landed in the place that I want to be for at least I don't know a a good amount of time Mm. at least we'll see right um but like business and leadership because there's so many things that you can talk about Mm -hmm. and I'm going to be forever growing my business and my leadership like that's never going to stop so I don't know it it's cool but it totally is a permission slip like to stop doing things that you don't like you know like follow what is lighting you up and I just love that you just share so authentically how you're feeling that you're pivoting and talking to your audience about it and they're I'm sure they're so understanding and uh, I'm sure you get DMs all the time because you're so active on, on Instagram <laughs> yeah I I truly do love it there like yeah you know it's like I'm on the road right and I know that you're just you're just as nomadic and I think the I'm very community community oriented like I need people around me and um without that like I can go into like a depressive state like so quickly Mm -hmm. it's like actually wild how how tribe oriented I think we all are let's Mm. be real um but have that in-person community here or wherever I am right right now I'm in uh where am I Asheville where are you oh my god yeah (laughs) (laughs) right we're in Asheville North Carolina and you know I don't have a whole tribe of people here and yeah like I go out and I you know go to the coffee shops and meet people in fact I just met this really cool guy who like came up to our van and told me how he was he he was interested in starting coaching and it was like wild right that like (laughs) out of all the things right this is what happens and this has happened to me three times in the last week not even kidding it's it's kind of wild but like I don't have the tribe that I see day in and day out like I used to when I was going to the gym or going to my yoga classes or doing anything for fun right Mm. and so I think that's why Instagram is like so important for me because I I just love people you know like I love the community I love building communities um and I think especially as a woman like building a business it can feel really isolating if you oh, aren't true. investing in yourself, if you aren't in these communities where you're like, wow, I'm not the only one. And I think it's really given me like a lot of permission to like, you know, slay any shame or any mm-hmm. any experience that I'm having. Um, so yeah, for me, it is like, it does feel like a virtual home. Beautiful. But I wanted to ask you, you mentioned you made six figures. I'm not sure if it was before you started traveling or even during traveling, but I just find it so fascinating that we can be so nomadic and be successful at the same time. So I I want listeners really to understand how this works. Yeah. um, So I'll give you kind of like a little story or like journey, I guess, of the business. Um, So I did, let's see, we started... I started actually like creating legitimate, like helpful content, let's say, um, kind of positioning myself as like, I'm an authority, right? Like I can teach you, I can help you when I was in fitness back in, I think I probably started that in 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had already had in-person clients at the gym, right? So I kind of already had that community, but it was in person. Mm-hmm. And at the end of that year, I was feeling like I didn't want to work at the gym anymore. I loved the gym, but I knew, you know, that feeling when you're in a pond that's too small and you're like, I need to get out there and like Mm. go into a, I need to go into the ocean. (laughs) And that's how I felt. And so when I got back, I went on a trip with my family to Costa Rica. And when I got back in January of 2019, I was like, I got to just go all in, all in on my online business, you know? And Mm -hmm. I was single at the time. I was 
um, living in a beautiful apartment and I obviously had bills to pay and I was just like, I'm going to fucking figure it out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. And there's like failure is not an option. Like, honestly, that's just like what it was because I was supporting everything for myself. And in the first eight months of being online, we hit six figures. Mm. And honestly, I didn't even know that it happened until the end of the year. <laughs> cool. Like, this is how like, like unaware I was when I did my taxes and I was like, oh shit, we did like 125 K this year. Like, <laughs> but like, <laughs> and that might sound hilarious, but like, I think I was so aloof to that being anything because I, in a way it was like, well, of course, because I was showing up every day. Like, right. you know, it, it, it was like, it like this wild thing because I was like, well, yeah, like I've been helping people every single day. And I made a, I kind of challenged myself that year of 2019 to post on Instagram every day. Oh, and I did it. I right. kept that promise to myself. And I honestly think that like level of self-trust and just continuing to show up day in and day out that year, like made me truly. Cause I was like, I can do things when I don't feel like it. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. So then after that, like it just kept growing. I invested in mentors, um, made really uncomfortable financial investments for sure. And mentors mm. that were where I wanted to be. And, you know, we two X, we two X, like it just kept growing. And, um, yeah, now we're here today and we're, I don't know how far away. We're close though. We're close to the million dollar mark in revenue. Oh which my feels God, that's really amazing. fucking cool. It is so yeah. cool. Yeah. And I oh, think gross. like, that's huge. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's, um, I think it's just a testament to like, you don't have to have it all figured out. You know, yeah. it's like, you just have to get yourself in rooms with other people that are doing big things to help mm. you see what's possible. Cause that's, what's expanded me, honestly, to be like, oh, like this is nothing in the scheme of like what we can create like obviously I'm so proud and celebratory of how far I've come but like I also know like yo like we could do so much bigger <laughs> oh my god I love it can you take us behind the scenes what does a typical day look like when you work in the van how does your morning look like your routines like share a bit what goes on in your day yeah totally um Well, I will say that like, so right now we're, we've been driving from Colorado and we're driving like all the way up to the Northeast. So oh. I don't know, it's probably like 2000 miles, right? It's a, mm. it's a good amount of driving. And so we are very much not in like our typical van life routine, which is like go to a place, hang out there for like a week or so, maybe a little bit more enjoy, like whatever. <laughs> we're kind of like, okay, go to a place for a few days, then go to another place for a few days. And it's Some days it's like go to a place for one day, mm. park, work, drive, you know, and do it again. Oh, and so, yeah, it is, it's taken a lot of like adaptation and like learning of like how to manage everything. And I, I wouldn't even say that I do it that great. I, I don't because it's like I'm every single day is new. Mm. We wake up in a different place almost every morning. And it is really challenging, right, to, like, be driven and sit your butt down and, like, do things when you could be going outside to explore. Like, there's so much temptation, <laughs> right? It, like, requires so much, um, de like, devotion. Like, I like to use that rather than discipline. Like, it's just, like, being devoted to, to the mission and the vision that you have. And um, so, like, let's say right now, a typical day – We typically will wake up anywhere between 7.30 and 8.30, um, you know, go outside. We have a dog. Well, you can hear him, like, jingling Ooh, his collar. Yeah. Um, I, we'll, we'll take him outside, go for a walk, get some vitamin D, uh, make some coffee, you know. It's, like, a pretty chill, relaxing morning. And then I will typically do some sort of, like routine or ritual whether it's like pulling cards meditation mm, uh it. yoga yeah like some sort of movement or just like dropping into my body um and then typically that leads me to getting super inspired and creative to go create something so mm. like this morning for example that's what I did and then like I had this whole program that just came out of me of like oh my god I want to teach oh, this you program the whole program this morning that's yeah crazy. yeah like it would Like that hasn't happened in a little while because I think I've just been like doing other things and haven't even like had the space and or like even desire to create anything new. Right. But I've been feeling that like, ooh, like want to create something new. And so, Ooh. yeah, I have I 
that's just like what happened. I have just like a piece of paper from like a composition notebook <laughs> that like has a bunch of fucking sketches and you know all that on it. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm so excited to teach this. And you know, next thing I know, it's 11 o'clock my time, and I'm like, okay, time for the Ooh. podcast. And then oh, jump on wow. and yeah. So I'm gonna <laughs> that's be today. Later on, I'm I'm gonna see if I can tickle out of you what this program is about. <laughs> <gasps> yes oh my god it's gonna be it's gonna be called i'll give you a sneak peek it's gonna be called yeah. power and prosperity oh my god the name yeah. already sounds amazing <laughs> <laughs> i'm so excited i'm like i feel like this is years in the making of oh, like totally yeah so we'll see we'll see what happens oh. but it feels really exciting that's, that's what it's going to be for me <laughs> that is so exciting i love the whole setup that you're so creative and you give yourself the time to be creative as well and all the movement and the meditation helps of course yeah what i also wanted to talk to you about a bit is you have been quite vocal about the adhd you mm, have yeah or might have yeah. so i don't know if you have been diagnosed i know i haven't but i feel like i have it so yeah it's, it's just so huge right now it is it is there's like it feels like there's a epidemic of it like being yeah. like of people being diagnosed or people thinking that they are and um you know i never thought that I had it mm -hmm. not because I like looked into it and didn't associate with it I just like it was never on my radar to be like oh maybe I have it you know <laughs> um yeah I've just always been like a very multi-passionate like I'm a fast learner like I talk fast I do things fast like yeah. I don't know that's just kind of always how it's been and um when I was I had just launched a program this was in 2011 uh why do I say 2011 2021 like behind a decade 2021 um we had just launched my program Unstoppable University and it was all mm -hmm. on like confidence and empowerment and I wasn't teaching really on business that much um but it was just helping people like get clear in their purpose and like get out of their own way and all that and right after that launch I I think I was kind of going through like a low in my business. We had just mm. experienced like the highest month that we ever had. And I don't know, there was yes. after that, after those highs, like if you aren't prepared for it and you don't know what's next, which I didn't, I just experienced a low. And I think I was going through some other like personal stuff as well. But mm -hmm. I remember messaging one of my team members and she was like, she said something to me and she was like, hey, like, do you like think that you might have ADHD? And I was like, oh. no. And then I was like, do I? And then I just went, you know, it's like someone asks you a question like that. You go down the rabbit hole of like, <laughs> do I have this thing? Right. It's like, <laughs> it's like when you have like something and you look it up on WebMD and you like diagnose yourself and you're like, oh, I have cancer. I'm dying. It's like, <laughs> yeah. okay, that was me. I like went down the rabbit hole and I took you can take like online assessments and tests yeah. to see. And I took one and it came back with severe. And I was like, <laughs> what? And then I took, I was like, no. And then I took another one and it was like, hi, another one. And I'm like, are you serious? Like it was one of those moments that was like, I have goosebumps even saying it because it was like the most validating, mm. like diagnose self-diagnosis at least. And then it was also so emotional because- mm -hmm once you realize oh my god this is why I am the way I am this is why I do things the way I do this mm -hmm. is why I think or act or feel like it it was like I could take a like just a new and deeper breath to be like wow I'm I always had that feeling like I didn't I don't know like something was off or I felt different or I couldn't put my finger on it really and so later that year in October, I went to go get a formal diagnosis right. um, and yeah, she diagnosed me with it as like a combination of hyperactive and inattentive. There's like those two um, types. Yes. And I was like, makes sense. I can't sit down to save my life. And if I am not completely obsessed with something, I cannot focus. Oh my God, that's okay. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, okay, well, cool. Now I have to learn how to exist knowing this but not letting it hold me back and so oh. that's kind of been my journey over the past year and change oh, cool. and I think I'm now in the place where I'm like okay yeah I have ADHD whatever like it's cool it's it's part of me but it also like doesn't 
mean anything. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I was driving before it. I got the diagnosis. It definitely messed me up a little bit because I, I kind of got in my head around it. And now I'm just like, okay, I talk about it because I think a lot of my people and um, yeah. the people Great that just resonate awareness. with me. Yeah, for sure. Like, they mm-hmm. resonate with with that story and like being like oh my god like I can be successful and have this Mm. and so now I feel like I'm really embracing it and just being like I can create like actually quite quickly when I stop making myself wrong when I don't compare myself to anyone else when I'm really in my own like space and that's felt super cool so I've just been leaning into that yeah no same my journey has been the same I see it as a superpower nowadays you know it's just like this boost of creativity and inspiration and I can be in the zone if I want to if I'm passionate like you yeah and that is a nice guide mark as to maybe I'm not as passionate when I'm not concentrating right and then I can maybe discard the project I don't know yeah yeah I think it is actually like a really great filter um to be like why do I want to do this like am I actually full body get on board or how do I change what I'm doing because I'm like you feel the same it's like you gotta just be obsessed with it you Mm -hmm. know like people can feel it when you are (laughs) that's so true oh my god yes people see it they can feel it yeah yeah share a bit about your intuition and how that guides you in your business yeah it's interesting I I don't think I realized that I had a super strong intuition until like until getting into like personal development and like the online coaching space and realizing that people were so disconnected from their intuition, Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um I I think I've always been like very unconventional and not really like wanted to follow the rules and not really wanted to do what everyone else is doing and feeling crazy because of it for sure. But having this inner knowing that I had to listen to, like I couldn't not, right? It's like that moment where you're standing on the edge of a cliff and it's like, do I jump? Because I have, you know, I have the pack on me and I'm going to fly or do I stay up here and stay scared and know that like I could have passed up an opportunity of a lifetime. Mm. And I've had many of those moments in my journey. The biggest one totally being, leaving my nine to five. I was so scared to do that. Like, I imagine. yeah, I mean, I think anyone that's an entrepreneur or like on the edge of going full time, it's, it is scary. Like, mm-hmm. of course, because you like, we have this, you know, we have this illusion because it is kind of an illusion of safety in our nine to fives of like, well, we got the steady paycheck. And I didn't know that I could really trust myself to create money and all of that until I became an entrepreneur and just kept doing it month over month over month. Um, But, you know, it's also, it's also been responsible for me pivoting like a million times and knowing that it's okay. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be okay. And I think it honestly is that feeling of, it's not even like (laughs) my intuition in a way, it's like always like, what's going to happen if you don't do this? Oh, it's, you know, it's not like a empowering question to ask ourselves, isn't it? Yeah. And and I think I use that question so much to get myself to do things I don't want to do or that I'm scared to do because my like life, let's say philosophy or just how I live my life is very much like, I don't want to get to the end of my life with regret. Like that's my number one, like guiding principle. And I think I have to like, in a way, use pain to to motivate me. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I'm just not motivated really by that much pleasure. Like I mm-hmm. really am motivated by like, fuck, like if I don't do this, then X, Y, and Z is going to happen, <laughs> right? Or if I don't make the leap, then I'm going to stay stagnant and stuck and be pissed off and annoyed and frustrated <laughs> at myself, <laughs> right? Because like, <laughs> it's like, it's like the high achievers curse, you know, it's like it more, more, more. But yeah, I do think it's that feeling of um, desire. And it's that feeling of like, I don't know, it just feels like this like burning fire in your belly of like, mm. oh, oh my God, like there's something there. And it's it's not really words usually. Mm. Sometimes it's like a subtle whisper, but it's usually this literally like magnetic pull of like, oh, I can't help it. <laughs> wow. It's like really a gut feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it truly is. Um, 
and I think like that journey of finding that and trusting that was um, I've gone through a lot with my like body, body image, overcoming mm. an eating disorder, like, you know, being a dancer growing up and mm. not liking how I looked and having a lot of self-hate. And so I wasn't really connected to my intuition as a kid, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, and it wasn't until, honestly, it wasn't until like I started doing more sports and athletic things and, you know, traveling where I was like having solo time that mm-hmm. I was really able to hear it. And that's like a huge part of, huge. Um, I guess, my life today too. And by, as a business owner is like, I do have a lot of solo time. Like I'm not afraid to spend time with myself. And mm-hmm. I think that's where we like learn the most about ourselves. I wanted to ask you in the van, like how do you have alone time when you have a dog there and your partner, your fiance? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's funny. Like <laughs> Kurt and I are both, like we have an amazing relationship it's the healthiest happiest relationship I've ever been in and I'm excited to we're gonna get married I think next year we're still kind of like when do we want to do it like we're doing Mm -hmm. bad life like do we really want to hold whatever I don't know we'll see when that happens but um he and I both are actually quite similar in that we do love having a lot of alone time and Mm -hmm. I think at the beginning of doing van life I was just like lonely you know I didn't have like my normal people around Mm -hmm, and so I just wanted him to do like everything with me because I was like I don't have any friends anymore you know (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah now it's like he will kind of hang in like he loves to like just chill in the van and Mm -hmm. I'm like I want to get out of here like I will go (laughs) explore I'll go for a hike um you know sometimes I'll be like I'm gonna take a yoga class I haven't really been doing that much lately but yeah, like I'll take Heffy for a walk. We'll go out and I'll just spend time. It's mostly spending time outside exploring, walking around right. like little towns or oh. I don't know, just finding myself in random places. But that's my alone time for sure. Cool. I also saw you had like a mobile tent or something that you assemble and you sit in there and it's like your little office. Yeah, we. Oh, my God. That was like oh, probably the best purchase we've made for the van. It's like... um. It's like a big hut, basically, mm. that you can, like, pop up and it and opens up in, like, less than two minutes. It's really cool. Wow. And um, we do it when we're, like, camping off grid or, you know, we're in, like, the nature trails. Like, right now, we're parked in a Cracker Barrel parking lot. So we wouldn't, like, bust out our tent, you know, right. <laughs> in, like, the middle of a parking lot of a food place. <laughs> but, um, yeah, when we're in, like, nature, it's awesome because it gives me a space. It gives him a space. Yeah. And you know, like you need space in a relationship. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah, we always rent a house with enough room so we can all sit somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, so good. And another question I have. Yeah. So when you speak about feminine leadership or like feminine qualities in business, because you've been talking about it a little bit, I saw. Yeah. Like how... How would you define the feminine way of doing business? Mm. Yeah, it's for me, it's very like body based, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, um, for example, with the program that I just shared with you that I just like channeled today in like five minutes, I genuinely think that women are, I mean, okay, okay. I'm going to zoom out. Women are working like men and it doesn't work Mm -hmm. because we are not men. (laughs) And we can't work 40 hours a week. We can't work consistently each week because we have a hormonal cycle and Mm -hmm. we're not always going to be on or creative or feeling our best. And we also have the moon, which I definitely am like super sensitive to the moon, full moon, new moon, like Mm, me too. It's actually wild. Yeah. So we just had a full moon. Right. And I've been like, really, I always get very hyper and like, I feel a lot during full moons. Mm. And um, so I have to trust that. And I've really leaned into the cycles of being a woman and um, trusted the ebbs and flows of like business, life, money all of that Mm -hmm. because I think like there's this there's this belief that you have to be doing things all the time all day every day Mm -hmm. in order to have a successful business and 
I mean, I don't know what could be a better example of that not being true by me doing van life because I love you sharing that. It's so he like, needs us to hear yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, like I honestly, this might trigger people, but I don't work that much. I work when I'm really fucking excited to. And <laughs> like, oh God, that is such an and, amazing quote. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's like living an into like literally letting your intuition and your body lead your business. And that's how I've always been like, and I didn't even know that I was doing it. It was just kind of happening. And I saw these people, like <laughs> I have a friend, she's one of my, she's one of my best friends, but I will never run my business the way she runs her business. She has like a 50 step launch plan. She's writing 18 emails, like, you know, doing all the social posts, like running a free masterclass, like doing a slide deck. And I am Whoa. like, I cannot and will not do all of that. Same. Like it's, I just, I can't, like, I, I just refuse to do anything that I don't really, really want to do. And of course there's things in our business that we like, you know, need to do, like mm -hmm. have to do, but either like I delegate those to my team or I'm like, okay, Sam, how can I make this task be more exciting? right like how can I make it a little bit more pleasurable or fun or whatever mm, so good and that yeah that might just be like like yesterday I had to write an email it was the simplest email it was sending the replay of a master class that I just mm -hmm. taught I just could not get myself to sit down and do it and I was like oh like you know you're having <laughs> one of those moments of just being like having a temper tantrum and you're like I don't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like you know what I'm gonna go outside and just like walk around and come back and just sit my butt down and do it and I did it you know oh. it's like <laughs> so funny but I know like if I did it it's again going back to the question what's gonna happen if I don't do it mm. well people are gonna be mad because they're not gonna get the replay for the thing they paid for <laughs> like sometimes yeah. that's what motivates me to do the things <laughs> wow can you share because you've mentioned your team a little bit now how like What is your team? How many people? What do they do? Yeah. Um, so I've gone through like varying sizes of team because I just didn't know what I was doing. Honestly, I was like, ooh, more people, more people. At one point I had like, or uh, it was me. Yeah, I think I had I, the biggest was six, including me. Oh, wow. And That's big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Um, and then I realized very quickly I didn't need all that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think every entrepreneur kind of goes through that of like an over hiring because they just don't know mm -hmm. and then they're like wait I have nothing to do and this feels weird and I'm so disconnected from my business and I'm also <laughs> spending so much money you know like I was spending like so much money in my team and I loved mm -hmm. them all and they were so good at what they did but I realized I just didn't need all that wow. and I didn't want it all actually so now I have one team member who is amazing mm -hmm. um And it's so nice just being able to like have her support me. And I just, I want to have a really simple business. I am not somebody who's ever been like, I want to manage a team. Right. Like to me, that actually sounds like so much work and so many skills that I'm not really even interested in having right now. So yeah, I try to keep it as simple as possible and It's so far, it's been great, honestly. Um, just oh, having like one it. like right hand woman that I can just be like, hey, blah, yeah. blah, 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 and not have to think about all the pieces and places and you know, all that. Would that be sort of like a virtual assistant, OBM, techie? Like, what does she do? Yeah, she so she's an OBM, um, mm -hmm. but she has like a team of VAs, so it's nice because mm -hmm. like so she, good. yeah, it she, like it's awesome, honestly. Um, I feel like I really like hit the jackpot with her and um, she is so detail oriented and just like so organized, whereas I'm like not at all. So mm -hmm. I like need that person to be like, and <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm giving this to you. <laughs> Having the, the lean, simple team for sure. Yeah, I love you brought that up because so many people, they're afraid to scale their business or to get the help or even to get mentors. So you just described so perfectly how you got all of that for yourself. And, and that's why you are successful as well, because you got all the help and the support. Yeah, yeah, I really do. Like, I 
I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for my mentors. Like, Mm -hmm. and I think that's like a huge, huge piece of success. If you look at all the most successful people in the world, they all have coaches, mentors, therapists, all these things. And I think there can be this, um, like determined energy that people go into entrepreneurship with of like, I'm going to do it myself. I don't need a mentor. And it's like, you're right. You don't need one. But if you want to go farther, mm-hmm. faster, you do it together. Yeah. And um, I, you know, every investment I've made, I've always 10 x it. And wow. it's like, I truly do think like, if you invest 10% of what you're making into your business, it's gonna 10 x it really it has proven true every single time without a doubt oh, that brings me to the topic of your channel program was it called power and prosperity yeah 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 please share the information here yeah, what is it about yeah so let me get my notes because i yes still, like, fresh, <laughs> your right? pizza paper um yeah it's honestly so i taught a free master class and it was all about like getting out of your own way and Right now, the pattern that I'm noticing is that, like, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that don't know how to make money Mm -hmm. or they know how to make money, but they don't know how to hold money. Mm -hmm. Like, they just spend it all, right? Um, And so I'm like, oh, interesting. There's this dynamic at play where they're just super confused around money, right? And, like, I am like, oh. I want to teach people, number one, how to make money because it is actually quite easy when you know how to do it, right? And then not only that, but hold it. Like Mm. you, like, because a lot of people don't feel safe enough to hold money. Mm -hmm. They, They make a lot of money and they spend it all. This was me, even at the height, you know, one of my highest income months, like I spent every, almost every single dollar I made. Not even, not even realizing it, right? Right. It was a subconscious belief of like, it's not safe to have money and I couldn't trust myself with money. And so it's going to be a lot about self-worth and money for sure. Knowing Mm. that you deserve it and that Mm. you can create it. And then your body, like your actual body's ability to hold money, like your nervous system, feeling safe with it. Um, And then, you know, also neutralizing money because money Mm. is just energy. It's just what we use to exchange things. Right. And Anytime we have a negative uh, emotion or reaction to it, or there's a guilt or there's fear or there's anything, it's not ever about the money. It's reflecting back to us what we have unhealed or unresolved within us. And I I notice a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs struggle to receive more money. Mm -hmm. And um, there's this like whole like, you know, I grew up Catholic. So I remember feeling this like, oh, we don't talk about money or, right. you know, people with money are greedy or selfish or this or that, or there's all these like layers that we have to peel back. If you've grown up with any t- sort of religion, or if you're just a spiritual person, generally, there is so much deconditioning that we have to mm-hmm. do in order to feel like we can be spiritual people and deeply service driven people and make a fuck ton of money. Mm-hmm. And I'm like determined to share how to do that because I'm like, I have always put helping people in service first. Money is a byproduct of that. Mm. Like, and so what happens when you shift your attention to the service and what happens when you shift your mind, right? Money mindset's like literally changed my life, but it's also realizing like it's safe to have money. So mm. we're going to go into all those things, oh my the body, God. W- worthiness, deconditioning from, you know, whether it's religious or spiritual beliefs, um, also managing money. So I'm going to give everyone like, I have like the spreadsheet in my business of how I like track everything. And I think okay. there's a lot of, especially ADHD, right? Where like yes. can be super disorient, uh, organized, but I realized I need to be organized with my money. Like that's really important to wow, be able so to receive share more. The whole Excel sheet? I'm going to give my, yes, I'm going to give my spreadsheet that you can track everything by month, by client, like you can have, so you know, every single dollar that's coming in. And what I found is when you track something, you manage it better and you make more of it and you focus more on what you're making and it just adds up. So it's been such a cool, like the link so I can put it in the podcast description because I want people to go find you with this program. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god yes it's gonna be great it's gonna be like short sweet maybe a few weeks I don't really know yet but yeah. it's gonna be taught live for the first round oh, and then we'll do a 
yeah then like and I will probably do like some Q&A so we can really like get into it all and then I'll be able to you know it'll, it'll just be like a standalone course where you can just dive in and um I'm like feeling so excited about that it, is so. exciting I can feel the energy already building up for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. wow that was such an interesting session so like I am leaving now inspired because it's so nice to talk to a fellow ADHD nomadic person who knows how to run a successful business on top of all of this <laughs> yeah this has been awesome I love this convo I'm energized too <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's nice it's not so often you meet people who are nomadic and successful at the same time so it's special it's so that's actually true I didn't really think about it because I, I guess a lot of people that are nomadic are like kind of major hippies you know yes. like they're yeah. like oh like I don't own anything and I'm just like the nature yeah. is my money and it's <laughs> like okay yeah like I love nature and I love like being yeah. a minimalist for the most part but I also yeah. like don't mind a fat bank account and like getting paid well for my services <laughs> it's like you can have both <laughs> yeah, and I like to rent beautiful houses. Like that's my view right now in in Sweden. So I like to have the oh stunning view. Oh my god, view. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and I'm the same. I'm like, I, I mean, if I did like, a, if I took my computer and like flipped it around, right? Like I love our van. It feels so us, and it's so homey and yeah. cute. And we have like you know all the things everywhere. And um, it's like I don't know. I think especially as women, like beautiful spaces really inspire creativity. And yeah. it's like. I don't I didn't I don't want to live in a shit box like I I want to live in a place that inspires me and that like makes me feel abundant you know and um so I think that's been one of like the biggest gifts is like sure I live in the van and we travel around um but I'm also in nature a lot and like what yeah, better yeah, exactly. of an example of abundance yeah you know it's like that's Absolutely. true abundance <gasps> oh that was amazing Thank you so much. Oh my God. I yes. hope I have you back on at some time because there's so many things we can discuss. But for now, I am so grateful. Thank you so much for your time. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's just <laughs> so fun. And I would love to come back. Podcasting and speaking is like my favorite thing ever. So I'm going to link your podcast, by the way, as well. So we didn't even okay. touch on your podcast, but I want people to know that Sam has a podcast. I'm going to link it <laughs> below. <laughs> you're so sweet yeah um my podcast is we it's fun we just have conversations like this or I'll do little riffs on like what I've been learning on the road and running a business yeah. and all of that stuff so it's it's fun over there amazing thank you so much yes thank you I appreciate it thank you guys for listening <laughs> bye